So, as a child, the world can seem a big and scary old place, can't it? Do you remember ever having a fear of something? Which, now when you look back, seems totally irrational. Dave in Starport, I was scared of the toilet. Oh dear, that's a problem. It wasn't necessarily the toilet, he was scared of sharks coming up through the U-bend. No, there's no sharks in the come up through the U-bend, what's wrong with you? Uh, Derek? I was afraid of the barber's chair, Mal. Couldn't stand the barber's chair. And Jean in Western Under Penyard was frightened to put her feet to the bottom of the bed because of the spiders. She didn't even know if spiders were there. She was just scared of the thought that they might be there. We need an expert on this, and we found a belter. He's the best in the business. Best in the business, and I'm glad he's on, because Jane in Starport needs help. I'm going to tell him about her. And Mark Powlett is from Reddit. He's a hypnotherapist. He helps people overcome their phobias and fears. He's on the line now. Let's get him on the show. Hello, Mark. Hello, Malcolm. I'm wondering how big these sharks are that they can get up the U-bend. <laughs> you wait till you read. Can I read Jane's text for yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. Let's right. hear it. Right. When I was a child, I was petrified of driving over river bridges because I was convinced the bridge would collapse. I was also scared of Punch and Judy shows and my Auntie Nellie's cuckoo clock, which she had to turn off before I'd even go into the house. Now, where'd you start with Jane in Stout? <laughs> <laughs> How long have you got? You've only got an hour left from the show. Um, all, most of our fears come from when we're kids. And so there's rational and irrational. And so, you know, in some ways, it's OK to be a little bit nervous about maybe driving over something high because our body and our mind wants to protect us from falling yeah. off it. Yeah. Um, so, so and it's actually quite a common one. The driving over bridges one is a lot. I see that a lot with grown-ups now, people mm -hmm. who still kind of haven't grown out of it. Um, things like Cuckoo Clocks and Punch and Judy, sometimes it can just be because maybe it was a bit loud. Some, it could have shocked you. And what happens is we tend to work in patterns of the way that we think and patterns that we behave. So if you kind of lock in a pattern, it might end up connecting something to something that's not even connected. So you mentioned the chap who um, was scared of the barber's chair. Yeah. And you, I think you said, well, actually, it's a bit like a dentist chair. Yeah. So it wouldn't be surprising if, if maybe something had happened in the dentist chair, and yet when, he, at the time, didn't kind of process it. And then when he got in the barber's chair, it reminded him because it was the same kind of pattern. And he started to think, oh, no, it's, the, it's this chair. So it wasn't really the barber or what he did, but maybe it was just the chair. So we connect things that we sort of connect dots that aren't really there. And then we kind of end up worrying about something. And if we get stuck in that pattern, it's, you know, people say to me all the time, oh, this sounds silly or this sounds stupid, but nothing really sounds silly or stupid because it's an irrational thing. We just got stuck. Once you get out of that, once you help someone to kind of get out of that pattern, you can let it go. But, you know, some of them are quite interesting. The fact that you might worry about a shark coming through you, Ben, yeah. I, I would say... So I don't know. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I don't know. But it's your job. What you do is you undo the pattern, if you like. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Ah. So events and experience set off this link in our mind, and then we suddenly get scared for no apparent reason. If you undo that, then you're. I don't know if the word is cured. Is it? Well, I'm not allowed to use the word cured. Oh. Um, but but, but it, ultimately, that is what you're doing. You know, once you break that pattern or you create a new pattern, you know, if you look at a, a really common one that lots of people might know and think is maybe being scared of spiders. Yes. Normally what happened if you were scared of spiders is something like you had a mother who maybe who screamed at a spider when you were little and taught you. So your mother screamed and went, ah, spiders! And you oh. went, oh, what's happened? My mum's scared. And you were scared of your mum being scared. So you weren't even really scared of the spider. Now, the next time you saw a spider, you might have remembered that your mum was scared. And now all of a sudden, now that makes you feel bad because you you're little. You don't want your mum to be scared. You want your mum to be in charge. Yeah. So now you're now scared of spiders. And actually, it wasn't even really the spiders. Sometimes it could be because you think, well, you, you did have an encounter. But spiders particularly is one where you tend to get taught it by, by your mum. And so, sorry yeah. that dads aren't necessarily doing it. I, I hate to sound like I'm only saying the mums do it. But the vast majority of people who've got spider phobias, if you say to them, was your mum scared of spiders? Yeah. They go, yes, well, funny enough, she was. Here's a, a, a regular one, if you like. Joe in Kidderminster, as we've been speaking as text. I was always afraid there was something bad hiding under my bed. I imagined a hand coming out to grab my ankle. So, when I got up, I'd stand on the bed and leap as far as I could across the bedroom so that it couldn't get me. Well, that was made into a John Lewis Christmas ad. 
that it, well, it was. You see? <laughs> well, it all worked out. Also, you could have broken your leg, and then you'd be scared of breaking your leg yeah, if you did that. Yeah. I, I can't recommend it. But that's the thing. You know, our imaginations are great. When we're little, our imaginations are very good. And sometimes we lose some of that as we get older, which is why we maybe aren't as scared of things oh. or things as we were. Oh. But it's you know, it's so common, isn't it? When you're little, you, you you like the scary stories. You like to be chased around by by a grown up pretending to be a monster, and you laugh and you giggle nervously. But then sometimes you you go to bed and you think, well, what if there is? You know, I'm sure we've all encountered the poor child. Yeah. Who's worried that there's a monster in the yeah. bed or under the bed or yeah. in the wardrobe or whatever? And often it's well, we told them that there was. We told them a story about it, so we put it we put it in their head. So it's not surprising, really. And Les was afraid of grass when he was little. He couldn't stand there. He was scared stiff of the lawn. Right. So I, I probably want to know a bit more details <laughs> of what happened. But maybe something could have happened on the lawn that was nothing to do with the lawn. But because that was the place that he was, you know, he could have been on the he could have been in the park and then maybe a dog came up and barked yeah. him. Yeah. And then he was scared of that dog barking. And he might actually not be that scared of dogs because he sort of translated it into being grass. And he goes, well, every time I go on that grass, something scary happened. And you feel that, you know, our imaginations are so powerful that we can remember something that happened. And you might remember something that happened from years ago. And you still feel yeah. it feels like it's just happening now. And we kind of we can't tell the difference between real and imagined. So you feel all those horrible feelings again. So maybe something else happened on the grass. Yes. Or he may have fallen over. He might have hurt himself. And then he went, well, it was on the grass. It wasn't on the concrete. Oh. And unfortunately, it got a bit stuck. Well, he goes on to say we didn't have a proper garden. So he didn't. Ah. Have, he didn't have to come across grass, <laughs> yeah. if yeah, you so like, was, on a normal so, <laughs> basis. Yeah. So, he, so that's quite interesting. So maybe, yeah, he went somewhere and then something happened yeah. that wasn't in his normal place. Because if he'd fallen over in his back garden all the time, he wouldn't have bothered him. But maybe he went to a special, ah, a special as a see? treat. He went to some grass. See? They said we're taking you some grass today, and then something about it. Maybe he had an ice cream and he dropped it on the grass. And then he went, oh, that's not very good. And he remembered that was a bad thing and started to think, oh, yeah, grass makes me feel sad. And that's why you're the best in the business, Mark <laughs> Pollard. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to talk to you, Mark. Take uh, care. Uh, yeah, and you. And if you want to uh, find out more about Mark's work, it's www. He's only, he's only in Redditch. Lovely fella. Mark Powlett, P-O-W-L-E-T-T. -T, Mark Powlett, one word, dot co, dot UK.